Uh, Jason's on the phone um, because the athletic won't replace the professor's computer. Oh, my God. But that's all right. No matter uh, where he is, it's always a pleasure to have Jason Jones with us. Jason, what's happening, man? Not much. No, this word processor that I have on dial-up is just not cooperating right now. Damn. You know, no. just, that it, sounds like something it, I would uh, have to do in computer class. <laughs> like every week, it's something else. Like, you know, it started where my microphone only works for StreamYard now. It doesn't work on anything else. Like I, you know, I was trying to do. Inter- I can't do Zoom with my microphone or anything now. So. Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah. And so now today I log in. Everything's been working all day. Then it decides right at three twenty to tell me we do not see your microphone or camera. Oh my gosh! And I'm just like, I just want to throw this thing out the window, but I can't. <laughs> uh, that's what, can you get my guy Jason Jones? Please get him a new laptop. Please. They Just say that they say that they're working on it, and, and soon enough we'll be able to choose a new laptop thanks of our, I, I don't know what you would call them, the the, the New York Times. Your, your, your parent company now, then. The, yeah, the, the yeah, I, yeah I wasn't sure what they referred to as, you know, refers to, to them as, but yeah, they're supposed to be eventually. Uh, so I guess by the time, you know, the NFL season, you know, starts or, you know. You guys are going to be like uh, Clark Griswold in Christmas Vacation waiting on that uh that Christmas bonus, <laughs> then you get there. Yeah, what do you give them yeah. a, a gift certificate to like the chili? <laughs> gift certificate to Chili's, half off any appetizer. Hey, I got three kids. I'll you know they well they don't really like chilies, but hey, anything I can save, anything I can save on feeding them, I will. <laughs> is is Jason is is uh, Andrew Wiggins the second best player on the Golden State Warriors? In this series, he is. Yeah. Okay, okay. Follow-up question. Is Andrew Wiggins the second best player in the series regardless of team? Uh, ooh. I was leaning he was third behind uh, Steph and my boy Jalen Brown, but Jalen mm. pulled some clunkers lately. Yeah. And I think you can't, you can't take away what Wiggins has done defensively. Just, I mean... And part of this, I don't know why Jason Tatum insists on putting his head down and going right at him to shoot air ball. I don't understand that at all. <laughs> no, you know, it just, it just seems like when, you know, when the game gets tight, Boston does not know how to run an offense. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah you know, yeah. and, you know, but you see that a lot of times with, with younger teams or teams that don't have a true point guard, which they don't really have. Mm-hmm. They just kind of get bogged down. They, they, don't, they need someone out there who can organize them. Mm-hmm. And they don't get organized late in games. They become real easy to defend. But yeah, right now Wiggins is the second best player in, in, in you know in the series. And depending on how things look, go, I mean, he's definitely been better than Draymond. Mm-hmm. He's been better than Clay. Yeah. And I would you probably argue over the course of the whole postseason, he probably has been their second best player. You know, yeah. I mean, Clay. You know, Clay has been. You know, we've seen good Clay. We've seen Clay who looks like we haven't played in two years' time. You know, Draymond has been. His, you know, he's been more probably more aggressive with the rest than he has been on offense at times. <laughs> I mean, like even last night, that thing with Tatum at the end of the fourth, how was the third? How was that not a tech? Uh, I, I mean, really, I'm like, come on, man. You, know, you, you know, if that had been anybody else, they would have said he's instigating a confrontation mm-hmm. right in front of the Celtics bench for yeah. whatever reason. Always, oh, they just like look the other way. I don't it, it be. You know, the refs have a lot to, I mean, when it comes to some of these officiating, they have a lot to answer for. Because, I mean, that that was just ridiculous to me last night. Like, this, he this, let him do whatever he wants. This series has been officiated really, really poorly. Like, glaringly bad. Yeah, and it's like the more replay we get, you know, <laughs> the you know, and I'm at this point, both sides, I'm all for giving text for some of these horrible flops we've seen. I mean, this, you know, it's, it's just, oh, it's, it has not been the most pleasant finals to watch at times. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm re looking at that play again. <laughs> Draymond, for no reason, just starts walking towards Tatum. It's one of those things where, you know, they don't want the people to shoot the ball, you know, in a time after a foul or something. Tatum's just walking off the court. Draymond just yeah. run up to him and try and take the ball. It's like, what are we, what are we doing? What are we doing? And, and, like, and why is this? And why is that okay? I don't I have no idea. If that would have been our boy Cuz, he'd have got tossed right oh there. Mm. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> in a in a major way. So it's the the interesting thing about um Draymond Green in that situation is there's a lot of front runner vibes there cuz he wasn't stomping around the court in Boston, that's for that's sure. Right. He looked yeah. shook in Boston. What it, and I'm usually with you Jason, where you know these guys they these are superstars. They they don't get shook in those situations. I thought he looked a little shook by what was going on in Boston. For some reason, it didn't seem like he anticipated uh, the venom that he got there. His mama tweeting about him, but I don't know who this is. <laughs> mm. Yeah, she did. I'm, I mean, yeah, he. I mean, he's been terrible in the finals for the most part. I mean, what he fouled out three out of the five games. I mean, except for game two where he got to basically they let him basically run his mouth and instigate, be you know, and step over and you know. There's that line that, you know, that line you cross. They let him jump over the line back and forth the entire game. Outside of that game, he really hasn't had much of an effect on this series for the most part. Yeah. He had a couple of, you know, he had a key rebounder too late in game four. But I mean, really, if the reason why they win game four is because Kerr took him out the game because he was awful. I had never seen him look that bad. And this is a guy who doesn't shoot as it is, but I mean, he was just, uh, they had a joke out here in the day where they said that when he was struggling, it looked like Draymond was playing with a backpack on. My man had two backpacks on in Boston. He had back a backpack, ankle weights, the whole nine with him in Boston. <laughs> but, but yesterday was the Draymond Green game. Come on, man. That's it's the Draymond Green on, game. Man. <laughs> like, man, y'all work really hard to. I don't. I don't. I don't know when this started happening with Draymond, but they work really hard to like overpraise what he's done. And I'm not trying to. Draymond did not play bad by any stretch of the imagination, but it feels like everything gets a little extra. And maybe that's true one way or another. But when they talk about Draymond, boy, they go overboard either in their praise or their criticism. And it's just you can't give an honest assessment of this dude anymore. It's never good enough yeah. to just say he played yeah. bad. Right. Now, right. Exactly. Yeah. It's either it's either he's a Hall of Fame or he was never any really good. It's like, yeah. now, come on, you can't say he was never he's never done anything, but Come on now. He also this is not. He also wasn't a Kim Olajuwon either. <laughs> I mean, it, you know, it's it just the the wild swings on him. And I mean, I just think he's going to get. He's going to be in the Hall of Fame. I mean, to me, that's a given. You know, mm-hmm. Defensive Player of the Year multiple times. You then you look at the Basketball Hall of Fame. Who's already in? You know, there's guys with less accolades who you might consider a role player who are already in. So he's going to get in. Mm-hmm. You know. You know, but. It's just crazy. People talk about him like he was just like a bum. I'm like, now, come on now. He, he, you know, people forget that game seven they lost in 2016. He had like 30, 15, and nine. Yeah. And, know. You know, it, 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 it was it was the backcourt that looked way shook in game seven that year. Yeah. And generally, Draymond kind of rises to the occasion in these pressure moments. I don't know what it is. Maybe he ate some bad clam chowder. You know, maybe he had some bad seafood, but he was. He has not been very good this series. And I think I don't, I don't think that's even a debate. I don't know what the people are debating. It's like about boy, Bonte in the Bay, where he swears Jordan pulls a superstar. I'm like, what are you watching? If you don't let him live off that, every time Jordan Jordan Poole has a as a as an eight point performance, <laughs> here goes Jay Jones. Super no, actually star. I don't. Actually, I don't. <laughs> because to me, I'm I don't have an issue with Jordan Poole. I have an issue with Bonte putting him on Steph's level. And then, like, oh, he, he's been pretty good all playoffs. What have you been watching? <laughs> because he kept coming at me. What have you been watching? I said, t- I told him, take off your, your pool jersey and watch the game again. Where do you see a superstar with him? I he said, was him out. I, yeah, but I said, let him be a nice young player who's getting better. Hmm. You don't have to turn him into the third splash brother already. He was like, oh, no, he's doing great. You, you're just being a hater. And then he goes into the, well, what about LeBron? I'm like. Can y'all discuss basketball without bringing up the Lakers? <laughs> Wait, what did LeBron have that. to do with anything? That's my boy. Well, you're just mad because the Lakers are at home. I'm like, uh, I've been over the Lakers for months. I ain't got nothing to do with the fact that you called a guy who's a bench player a superstar. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's just, you know, yeah, I mean, it's, but, you know, the Bay Area media can be wild. When they like a guy, oh, my God, that guy is the greatest thing ever. Hmm. Did you not even close? And I'm like, yeah, yeah. I'm not gonna. I'm never gonna let Bonte live that down. Because as soon as he called Jordan Poole a superstar, the clunker game showed foul. <laughs> they followed right after that. It was That's like, cold, man. Hey, man. Shout out. 
Michigan. Shout out to, yeah. to Michigan legend Jordan Poole, man. Hold, hold your head up, big dog. You you won one away from the championship. Uh, yeah, Logan Murdoch's twin. <laughs> he got drafted. I swear that was Logan getting drafted. Hey, so let me ask you this: You talk about Jordan Poole, and this is not—I'm not putting them on the same level, but a lot of people are starting to try to tear down Jason Tatum after these finals. And nah, I, I'm not having. I think Jason Tatum is exactly who we thought he was throughout this whole playoffs. He's not having a uh, phenomenal series, but he's also not playing like a scrub out there. He's had some good games. What do you think about Jordan, Jordan Jason Tatum's performance in these finals? I think uh, Tatum has been blah. I mean, I think his fourth quarter has been pretty bad. I think his decision-making sometimes in terms of when to attack hasn't been great. You know, I don't think he throw him away. I mean, people, you know, I, I, it's just the, it's the, the wild swing. I know I have fun with it, too. I think Tatum made himself more of a target for criticism with the whole Kobe stuff going into the final. Like somehow the whole he text Kobe thing just shows up. Yeah, yeah, come on, man. Just play. Don't put that. Don't put number 24 on yourself and then go out there and, and, and have a fourth quarter like he had again. I think some of us just honestly, people are just, you know, this culture, we're making fun of Jordan Poole. Be, I mean, not Jordan Poole, Jason Tatum, because, well, you know, he, he tried to put that, that Mamba thing on himself, and it hasn't gone well for him. Hmm. That's tough. He, he, I mean, there's still – what do you think happens in game six? Do you, you, do you, do you think we see a game seven, or, 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 or is it just too far gone for the Celtics right now? I think they can win. I think they can and probably will win win game six. I mean, this was a tight game. Remember, they they can they for the first time they dominated the third quarter. You yeah. know, and then they just you know, and they have this thing where they decide to try to have a three point contest with, with the Warriors. That's crazy talk. And it's like whenever they're That's what they did in game four. Time, yeah, yeah. Whenever they're successful, they're attacking, and I don't know what at what point they go on the court and say, you know what. It worked for, you know, we, we got the lead by attacking. You know what we're going to do? Let's just start jacking up contested threes. <laughs> right. I, think, and I don't know if it's true. I heard a stat there like of, of Jalen Brown's 18 shots, 17 were contested. Mm. And you mm. can't tell me that with those two guys, you can't get better shots. Right. I mean, right. and a lot of them were just, they were just forcing it, just driving in the traffic, turning the ball over. I mean, you're, you're watching it going, what are you looking at? <laughs> like, how was that a good idea to drive in three white dirt? Yeah. You know, and sometimes it's kind of that gift and the curse of you're really talented. You can make that work sometimes, but they make themselves, when they've lost, it's the turnovers, and they've made themselves very easy to guard with their decision making. Hmm. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how, how these finals play out. I'm hoping we get a game seven on Father's Day. That would be dope. Hey, um, here in Sacramento, Definitely not uh, concerned about the finals or the playoffs. We're about the draft right now, right? Kings will not be playing on Father's Day. <laughs> <It> will not be. <laughs> One of the things that's been going on around here, though, is uh, we've been complaining about how they're not letting us know who's coming in and working out and, and a couple other things. And all of a sudden, the Kings start dropping these videos about you know all these guys coming in to work out. One thing that I asked was, is this something that's common? Because now if you look around in some of these reports, you see it's it's being reported more about player X is going to OKC, like Chad, Shaden. All these guys are going to OKC now to work out or Orlando or wherever it is. Was it a situation where the Kings were just being overly secretive before? Or did they kind of match up with what the league does in general as far as you're not going to hear too much about workouts until maybe the last week or two? No, there's been a shift. I mean, I remember years ago, we were able to actually watch draft workouts. Mm. Like, we watched the workout with Steph and Tyreek and Johnny Flynn and Patty Mills. And I just watched it. Hey. <laughs> yeah, we, yeah. We, got, we got to watch that and watch Tyreek, you know, and that, especially that, that type of a setup. Tyreek destroyed Steph. It was, it was not pretty. And because stuff like that began to come out more and more, what you had was more agents stepped in and said, okay, my guy will work out, but the media can only see X amount of the work. I think it only see individual stuff. Mm-hmm. They can't see the whole workout. And it just kind of just got more restrictive and more restrictive. I remember a few years ago when I was um, the year that 
Gangsta Jimmer. And Kimball Walker had some come up where he couldn't make the trip, and all of a sudden they got out that Kimball was afraid of Jimmer. <laughs> oh, my. And, and so this come became on, this whole thing. I mean, and so teams got more and more, you know, you know, and it became a thing. A lot of it was agent driven, though. A lot of it agent driven. They didn't want those videos out there of their guy getting worked over in a, in a workout by some guy you never heard of. <laughs> you know, it was like, oh my god, you know, this guy, you know, this, this, this undrafted guy is killing my guy in a workout. <laughs> so I just say it, it's kind of just, you know, it, it, it varies from. Oh, oh wow, this, oh, my microphone still ain't working. It says, <laughs> but but my camera works now. But I don't think that, that doesn't do any good. <laughs> You know, but yeah. So, but what you know, what what's happened is, is that a lot of teams just that kind of to placate the agents, they just don't say anything. And I think that I noticed that's the first time major with the Kings in 2017. Hmm. Um, That was the first major shift where it became really, really secretive. Like, remember, we found out De'Aaron worked out or he came in because he put it on his Instagram. I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it was you know, and then you then you find out. Oh yeah, by the way, Josh Jackson did come by. You know, and it became kind of like a little secretive thing. Like then they wanted all of us to know that Marvin worked out. I mean, we got to come come to the end of Marvin's workout. Oh my god! <laughs> I mean, they let the we let they let the whole world know Marvin was in town. Oops. But put out a press you know, release. You know, it, yeah. Yeah, I mean it's it, it's it's been a, a shift all around, and then you see the agencies going like you saw what uh, Clutch did, and other agencies have now done as well, where they get all their guys together, and so you can come, everyone can come see you know our guys at once, and then you select okay, if we think this guy's a top eight pick, he won't go work out for anyone out of the top eight, mm-hmm. you know, and then that's why the doing your homework and everything, and knowing the players and the interviews are so important. Because a guy may think he's a top five pick, and he may go 13th, and he might be there for you. Yeah. And we got a prime example of that. Steph Curry did not want to go to the Warriors. People forget that. Mm-hmm. He wanted to be a Nick. Mm-hmm. And yeah. the, the Warriors took him anyway. <laughs> so, you know, you, you, you really got to do your homework and all that stuff. Because, the way, I mean, the workouts, that whole game is controlled by the agents now. They, they they run that. They pick and choose where guys are going to work out. And they have the ultimate, uh, well, I just want my guy to come work out unless you agree to my rule. Mm. So the lack of transparency really isn't that big of a deal? No, I know. It's it's it's, a, it's almost like a, like a deal with the devil, so to speak. It's probably enough the best analogy. But, yeah, if you want to get this guy in there to work out. Now, some of, it's, some, of some guys will be like, He'll only work out if it's an individual workout. My guy doesn't work out against people. And I've seen guys get mad about that. I know the markets wanted to work out against everyone. Hmm. And, and there was the story of how he just went in there and just gave gave Derek favors the business. Hmm. And, you know, of course, you know, Derek, you know, you know, these stories start to circulate as you hear about this, that there's no video of it. You can't prove it. Yeah. So you can always say face because like that didn't happen, and how do we really know? And then you start talking to the coaches and who were there and other people around the league. They're like, oh yeah, this happened, that happened, you know. And, and but still, the funniest one of all time for me was Kimball Walker was afraid of uh, Jimmer. <laughs> that's amazing, and that's and that's why he didn't make it to Sacramento that particular day. Come on, man! Why they gotta say that? Man? That's amazing. Why? Absolutely <laughs> incredible. Um. Real quick, Jay, uh, do you have any any intel, any feeling about what's going on here with this fourth pick? It's starting to get crazy with all the rumors between what OKC might want to do, who's willing to move up, what they're willing to give up. We hear stuff about the Knicks wanting to get up to four for Jaden Ivey. Julius Randle might be involved in there. What are you What are you hearing and what are you believing? <laughs> Anything? Well, first off, I believe nothing. <laughs> <laughs> that is the correct answer. <laughs> you know, it's like the old Jay Z line about what you believe in all, you know, or Richard Pryor. I don't believe it till like till it happens. No, Bernie Mac, he doesn't believe anything till it happens. Yeah, I don't believe anything. Yeah, I just it's, don't. It's, it's, I, it's I, I've learned. I've been around too long to believe any of this stuff. You know, and of course, and, and you, you got to look at who's always being talked. About. Of course, the Knicks are want to move up. They want to move up all the time. Because they need attention. Of course, the Knicks do. And of course, you're going to hear OKC because Presty makes like 18 trades a day. 
<laughs> or whatever it feels like. So, I mean, it's not a surprise, especially in a draft where after you maybe get past your, you know, the first pick, there's maybe not a consensus number two in some people's eyes. You know, but it's like most of this stuff doesn't happen. And a lot of these things don't make sense. Like, I don't know how Julius Randle makes sense on this Kings team. You know, I mean, he's a, it'd be talent, but it's like, okay, that's a, you know, does it fit? I don't know. I take and, him. Who oh, does I mean, fit? Take, who, who fits here? We're, we're, no we're always here. This oh, That player doesn't fit. Nope, that one doesn't. All right, who the hell fits then? What works? I mean, maybe I'm just looking at, you know, I think they need more of a wing-type player than they do another uh, – Mm-hmm. I, and for me, in some ways, he duplicates the bonus. Mm-hmm. But heck, if you can get, you know, you're you're a much more talented team with both of them. Yeah, you can keep those two together. And yeah, you know, of course, you're a, you're probably you know, you know, does that get you to forty something wins? I don't know, but you're better. But the reason why, I mean, the Kings, they really want to win now. You know, going for the, they, they, you know, they don't really this this whole they don't want that that playoff drought to, you know, be, you know, to turn legal in a couple of years. So they've got to be careful, obviously, because you don't want teams selling you your, you know, a guy who is kind you know, who was good in 2019, who was maybe on the downside, and you give up assets and pay this guy $30-something million, and now you're just staring at him <laughs> and wondering why you're still at 38 wins. They can't do that, though. But I don't believe in these stuff yet. I think as you get closer, you get a better. You know, usually in that that week, or those few days leading up, all the teams have an idea who's getting picked. You usually get one or two curve. I think last year, Giddy might have been your curveball, mm-hmm. but generally, you know, by that Monday or Tuesday, who most teams are going to take. And you know, you 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 know, and generally, you, you have an idea. Like I said, you, you'll get a curveball here and there, but if there's going to be a deal to be made, I think it'll happen right. It right. You know, in the day or two, or the day of the draft, some Kings fans wouldn't take Giannis because of fit. They're like, ah, <laughs> how did he play next to Sabonis? I, I just don't like the fit. He doesn't shoot the three ball, even though. Yeah. Does. So what? Yeah. yeah, like I said, I like to talk about fit, but I always say, give me the talent and let's try to figure something out. That's it. Before That's why we, I before you, before you, yeah. I mean, like I said, if you if, if if the price is right, you definitely take him because what? What's your what's your alternative? In terms of just talent, Trey Lyles. <laughs> okay, all that was unnecessary. I no, apologize, that was, that was, Trey oh Lyles. God. I'm sorry. I'm just, Trey, uh, Trey's just sitting at home, chilling, probably playing. You know, oh my God! TV or something. I'm, I'm bad. Just, someone's going. Someone's going to tweet him like, "Man, they're taking shots at you on the radio." And just man. Seth so, Rollins, Tim, and I didn't. I didn't. That, that's that's not what oh I meant. I just meant it's a. It's a, it's no, a little no bit of reason. He's already hurting as it is. If you just rip the peck, <laughs> the, the peck right off the bone again. Yeah, you know, there was okay. no need for that. And I, I, Trey Lyles. I apologize. Uh, like, what, did he, what, did, what did he ever do to any of us? That <laughs> traded. He, he didn't. He didn't. He didn't deserve that. As good old Jr. would say, that man has a family. Damn it! <laughs> yeah, for the love of God, <laughs> Trey Lyle has a family that loves him. That's and right. He doesn't, be, he doesn't need to be the whipping boy of, of Sacramento media because you know it, it was bad when he got here. It'll be bad when he's gone. I oh, thought Trey okay, Lyle's. Relax, relax. I thought Trey Lyle's played just fine last year. Yeah. 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 But you know, but when you're a ba- when you're a bad team, guys like that just get like get like hate for like being who they are. He's like, hey, I'm Trey Lyles. Why are you looking at me crazy? Yeah, you got bigger problems <laughs> than me, pal. <laughs> like, like, it, and that's been my thing with, with some of the fans. They were like, well, how come that guy can't play better? Like, if that's your concern, we got way bigger issues. If we're if we're saying we need to get you know. 20 and 10 from Rashawn Holmes. You got way <laughs> bigger issues if we're mad that Harrison. It was like something one time if Harrison Barnes gets you 25 a night. I said, oh. what has he been, what has he oh. been that to? I said, I said, you're mad at Harrison Barnes for being Harrison Barnes. I can't be mad at him for being who he is. Mm. That point. That point. Hey, uh, real quick before I let you go, Jason, uh, some good baseball played at uh, China Basin this past weekend. I heard about it. I was busy this weekend, you know, so I don't really, you know. I, it, it just you didn't, highlighted you didn't miss the nothing. You didn't miss nothing. You, 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 it just you highlighted the work. hypocrisy of, of of that fan base that wears Halloween colors because when when the Dodgers beat them twice, all I heard was it doesn't matter until July. Hey. They went three in June. Oh, parade! Oh, oh, oh. I'm like, people are tagging me. I'm like, dude, I'm at a barbecue. I'm not thinking about that. Right. I thought it didn't matter. 
I, I thought it didn't matter right now. Now it matters. It matters with the Jets. It Dodgers matters with the Giants. With their, with their little two game sweep, they're just good at you know shortcutting things, man. They shortcut a World okay, Series well, championship. Okay, yeah, that, that, that three, yeah, yeah. Really, yeah. Ooh, that three game. But, <laughs> but know what? That doesn't change. That doesn't change. Game five and playoffs last year. I mean, you know, I've been to parade, so it's good with me. That's okay. That's fine. That doesn't change the playoffs. <laughs> that don't change the fact that the, the 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 biggest, the greatest regular season in history was ended by the Dodgers. The, <laughs> my biggest concern from that weekend is Walker Bueller. Whatever, I don't care about that series. I I need them to get Walker right. You didn't miss yeah. nothing, no man. You didn't miss nothing. It was a bunch of easy work. You didn't miss nothing. Whatever, whatever. You know Walker ain't right if y'all were hitting him. Come on now. He owns he owns that team, you know. I'm like, Kershaw gave me four innings. I'm thinking big picture, and I need him to spend that $800 billion payroll and get me another starter. Well, they'll go do that. No, <laughs> they'll, no, definitely, right. they'll definitely do that. Jay, we appreciate I'm, I'm, you. I'm glad they will. <laughs> All right, so y'all be good. 